They were right in that the videos did manage to bring a lot of attention to Navigator, but I'm not sure how successful they were in the long run. I mean, most people know Navigator is the channel that posts gaming in the Clinton years, while know nothing whatsoever about the awards that they give out. Indeed, this comment from Thonaros sums up the attitudes of more than a fair amount of viewers. What the fuck happened to this channel? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hey, so it's been entirely too long since I've made another Gaming in the Clinton Years update video. I'd actually been planning this one since literally the middle of January, so I thought now would be a good time to get off my ass and actually put it together. Hopefully you're all caught up with my previous updates because, unlike some of the others, this one more or less continues straight from where the last one left off. So, do you all remember in my last update how I was actually super excited because George Wood had made his grand return to YouTube after an absence of like five years, and how it seemed like we were going to be getting a lot more George Wood videos in the foreseeable future? Well, maybe I should have known better, because my excitement was entirely misguided. You can't tell from the current state of their channel, but what followed had Navigator purge basically every single video from their YouTube account, effectively destroying their channel and almost completely alienating what little fanbase they had in the process. Yeah, what follows is easily in the running for the weirdest story arc in the history of gaming in the Clinton years, and considering all the other weird shit I've talked about over the past two years, think about what a high bar that is to clear. So I've kept you waiting long enough. Without further ado, let's take a look at, to once again quote Thonaros, what the fuck happened to this channel. So even though I suggested that everyone watch my last update video, I will bring everyone up to speed on the basics. On Halloween of last year, George Wood, on his personal YouTube channel, released George Wood The Return, which was a goofy Twin Peaks parody that was actually genuinely entertaining. At the same time, on the War of Awards channel, a video called George Wood Christmas was set to premiere on Christmas Day, promising even more George Wood weirdness. Given that I was pleasantly surprised by the humor of George Wood The Return, and because I was just excited to see anything George was doing after half a decade away from the internet, I eagerly awaited the new video. But December 25th came and went, and when I got around to watching the George Wood Christmas video, I knew something weird was up. I'm not gonna mince words, the video was not good. Sure, it starred George Wood, and it featured a cameo from Santa, so at least we got what was advertised, but that's about all I can say in praise of it. Essentially, the video was another Twin Peaks parody, albeit one that, in my opinion, contained none of the charm that made George Wood the return work. I think a big part of why that is has to do with an element of comedy that's just gone over the head of everyone at Navigator. Restraint. When a joke is funny, there's a natural tendency to continue milking it for all it's worth. But if that's even effective, after a while you're going to see diminishing returns. George Wood and his Twin Peaks parodies exemplify this perfectly. The first video was so effective partly because it was short, self-contained, and said everything that it needed to. There was honestly no need for a continuation. What we got was nowhere near as entertaining, and honestly it kind of makes me look back on that original video in a slightly more negative light. In any case, if that was the extent of what happened on Christmas, then it would have been pretty disappointing, but nothing really to write home about. However, little did I know that something far crazier was going on over on Navigator's main channel. Before I go any further, I have to make a short disclaimer. All of this was happening on or just after Christmas, and at the time, I was visiting family and in general not online very much. Because of that, I wasn't able to witness most of this in real time. Most of my knowledge, and hell, even a lot of the screenshots I'm going to use in the coming minutes, I only have because a couple of people on the War of Wars Discord server message me directly. I'll be sure to credit the relevant parties individually when the time comes, but right now let me just say thanks for keeping me in the loop. So at some point on Christmas Day, I got a message from War of Wars Discord member Rusty Lasagna. Attached to his message was a screenshot of Navigator's YouTube channel showing that every single video had been set to private, making them totally inaccessible. They did this without any warning or foreshadowing whatsoever, and needless to say, people were equal parts confused and upset that over a decade's worth of internet history was just gone. Immediately, people began to speculate on what could be going on. Some had even theorized that they did it because of my videos. I suppose that it isn't hard to see why. 
Navigator had, of course, been slowly scrubbing their non-gaming in the Clinton years content from the internet for much of that year, and I did theorize in an earlier update video that it could have been my videos that prompted them to do that. A few others, however, had another theory, that Navigator was constructing some sort of ARG. For those who are unaware, which not too long ago would have included myself, an ARG is an acronym standing for Alternate Reality Game. I'm going to shamelessly borrow the definition found on Wikipedia because it's pleasantly concise. An alternate reality game is an interactive network narrative that uses the real world as a platform and employs transmedia storytelling to deliver a story that may be altered by players' ideas or actions. Basically, it's a method of storytelling that leans in heavily on real-time participation and is typically spread across a number of unique real-world channels, for instance, on somebody's Twitter feed or in the comments of a YouTube video. I'll come back to this shortly, but for now, let's talk about what Navigator did on December 27th. On that day, Navigator uploaded a video called George Lives. To everyone's disappointment, the video did nothing to address the purging of their channel. Instead, it was simply a 57 second clip, in black and white and badly out of focus, from the 2000 film Gladiator. This confused the hell out of me for a few reasons. First, why Gladiator? The film hadn't been relevant in close to two decades, and is best known today more for robbing Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon of a Best Picture Oscar above anything else. Second, there was no jokes here, and it featured nothing about George at all. It was just a clip from a now obscure movie. And third, the clip itself looks atrocious. You can probably find Gladiator on Blu-ray for less than $10 now, but this looks worse than a second generation VHS copy. Whatever this was supposed to be, it did not go over very well. The like-to-dislike ratio says it all, and the comments are overwhelmingly, if not exclusively, negative. But before anyone had any time to process what the hell was going on, Navigator kept the crazy coming. For on that day, and I have to thank War of Awards member Lori for bringing this to my attention, all the Gaming in the Clinton Years videos, which remember, were all privatized only a couple days previous, were entirely removed from their channel altogether. I have no photo documentation of this, but it was surreal to see the total views for their channel which had numbered in the millions just a few days before, reduced to zero. Suffice to say, Navigator's followers, which are already pissed off at the privatizations in the stupid Gladiator video, were decidedly less than thrilled. The negative comments kept piling in, both on YouTube and now on Twitter as well. But if you think this is the end of the story, oh no, there's even more. Now remember, at this point, Navigator hadn't posted anything outside of the George Lives video for quite a while, so everyone was used to seeing little to no activity on their channel. So all their subscribers must have been more than a bit confused when, all of a sudden, they received a flood of notifications for premieres of around a dozen new videos. And when I say confused, I mean pissed off, as most of these subscribers weren't keen on having their notifications getting bombed by all these premieres. Just imagine, you have a fairly dedicated fanbase, albeit one that's focused mainly on morbidly observing your weirdness and ridiculing it when the need arises, and in a matter of a few days, that fanbase comes to regard a flood of new content from you, which at one point would have been cause for celebration, as a nuisance. It's almost impressive how quickly the channel was able to entirely squander the goodwill of their fans. This all led to the community leader of the Discord, Justin Oliver, releasing a statement to put the mind of the community at ease. Essentially, he said that he was just as in the dark about everything going on as the rest of the community, and that he would try to figure out what was going on. I suppose that's better than releasing no statement at all, but I do find it fascinating that, given how much overlap exists between the War of Awards and Navigator, remember both of them are run by Tom Allen, the community leader of their own Discord server would be kept in the dark about a major development going on on their YouTube channel. So what were these videos that flooded the notifications of their subscribers with premiere announcements? No surprise, but they were very odd. For starters, the average length on each video was less than 10 seconds with the longest one clocking in at around 15. The titles seem to reference infamous quotes from their old reviews, but of course it gets even weirder than that. The same day the first of the new videos premiered, I got a message from Gator Violet, the curator of the wonderful No Context Gaming the Clinton Years Twitter account. Link to that in the description for those of you who haven't checked it out because it is hilarious. Anyway, she informed me that the videos Navigator were posting were, in fact, the exact same clips she had uploaded on her Twitter account with no credit given to her, of course. This floored me, and ironically, given that we're talking about something called No Context Gaming in the Clinton Years, helped me to understand the importance of context when it comes to posting content online. For instance, 
Here's one of the videos in question. If any of you out there don't go see this movie just because you don't want to sit in the theater for three hours, well, I hope you die a slow and painful death over exactly three hours. When Violet posted it originally, I thought it was hilarious. She was able to capture the essence of the absurdity of gaming in the Clinton years in the most concentrated form possible. When Navigator reposted it, I was pissed off. I thought, wow, you wipe over a decade's worth of content from your channel and this is what you're replacing it with? Again, I wasn't alone here. In addition to the usual anger we've been seeing, now people are calling them out for stealing from No Context Gaming in the Clinton years, including, eventually, Violet herself. They did eventually send Violet a DM, which she was kind enough to share with me. The DM apologized for posting without credit, and claimed the reasons for doing so was because Navigator are a bunch of old people who don't know how the internet works. Now, I have to call bullshit on this apology for a couple reasons. First, if you watch old episodes of Flights of Fantasy, they were actually streaming segments of the show using RealPlayer beginning in the late 90s. So to say they don't know how the internet works doesn't hold when, in some ways, they were literally pioneers of internet broadcasting. Second, if we're going to take their message entirely literally, Tom Allen, the guy in charge of the whole operation, isn't old, he's a Gen Xer. Third, it doesn't matter if it's the internet or not. Plagiarism is plagiarism, and any sensible person should understand that. They should have kept the apology to a simple, I'm sorry, because what they actually said is impossible to take seriously. Regardless, they did eventually give credit to Violet in the descriptions of each video, so at least the story kind of has a happy ending. Now, at this point, we need to go back to the alternate reality game discussion from earlier, because, spoiler alert, Navigator was, in fact, trying to put together an ARG. This is actually going to be really hard to talk about, because, and I'm not going to mince words here, the ARG was a complete failure, and to this day, I know neither how anyone was supposed to actively participate, what participants would actually look for if they chose to participate, or any indication of what the end goal was. The return of gaming in the Clinton years is an obvious guess, but this was never made clear at any point. Anyway, let's return to the George Wood Christmas video. We've already looked at the video itself, but the description is worth glancing over. Doppelganger or not, Mr. C knew where Navigator's digital copy of gaming in the Clinton years would be stored. He could kill two birds with one stone, but in so doing, the people cried out, unaware of the real promise. Only a remnant had seen the true return that negated any need for a sacrifice. I suppose this weird description is part of the ARG, as is the Twin Peaks vibe of both the description and the video itself, but if this is meant to spur participation in anything, it didn't. It was the same story on the other videos. George Lives had this ridiculous description too, but again, nobody was participating in anything outside of being angry. Like I said, what were people supposed to look for? How were they supposed to participate? What was the greater point in all this? At the same time, the War of Awards YouTube page posted a series of short videos of George himself saying bizarre, Twin Peaks-esque things. Was this the whole George Wood is dead joke brought back in an even more ridiculous and unfunny form? I have no idea, and neither did anybody else. But to be fair, not many people knew about the videos anyway because, like I said, they were posted on the War of Awards YouTube page, a channel that, as I've said before, very few people even know exists. Even today, they still only have 144 subscribers. It's hard to get people to participate if they don't know where to participate. What's even more confusing is that one of these new George Wood videos were posted to Navigator's channel itself. This one ended up getting significantly more views, because of course it did. Most people are subscribed to Navigator's channel, which makes me wonder what even was the point in spreading these videos across multiple channels when one would have sufficed. Furthermore, that video mentioned a few significant details. Break the code. Violet. First, creepy shout out to Violet specifically, and second, there's now mention of a code, which I'll get back to in a minute. Again, none of this ended up going anywhere, with the only responses being anger to outright mockery. Clearly, everything they were doing was backfiring spectacularly. So much so that on the first of the new year, Navigator actually released an official statement. The statement was posted on their Twitter page, via Twitlonger. I'm not going to read the entire thing, because that would take too long, but I will summarize the major points. Most importantly, the post, for the first time, discloses that everything was, as many people had thought, an attempt at an ARG, 
The goal was to build excitement and anticipation for the eventual release of HD versions of Gaming in the Clinton Years videos on the War of Awards YouTube channel. To their credit, the post did take the time to apologize to the fans for removing all of their content without warning, and even disclose that some people had messaged them out of genuine concern for George's well-being. There unfortunately were no hints as to what any of the weird videos or descriptions were supposed to mean, outside of referencing Twin Peaks. But they did discuss the code George mentioned in one of his previous videos, and posted it in full at the end of the post. Anyway, though the ARG was in itself a failure, now the community at least had something to solve with a definite end goal in mind. With all that information, as well as a cryptic clue on Twitter that most interpreted as relating to prime numbers, the community got right to work to try and crack the code. Again, I won't go into it in detail, but I do want to give shoutouts to That's Me, Where Are My Games, and Rusty Lasagna, whose hard work actually managed to crack said code. If you're interested to relive their progress, everything's archived in the Discord. Anyway, the code ended up spelling out two messages, War of Awards Caucus, and George Chloris No More Whips. Again, damn Chloris Leachman references. Very soon after the code is cracked, however, another video was posted called Achievement is Its Own Reward. Pride obscures it. Dot, 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 dash, dot, 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 O dot, F dot, dash, dot, dot. As you can see, it seems to be a message in Morse code, and the description is another mishmash of cryptic nonsense meant, I'm guessing, to prolong this scavenger hunt. If that was the goal, it didn't work. That's me, in particular, didn't think it was fair to post another video so quickly after the code was broken, especially one that was particularly hard to decipher. His words seemed to have hit home, because later that day, we got our HD Gaming in the Clinton Years videos. There were two videos posted on the War of Wars channel that day, a place both wonderful and strange, and every day, once a day, give yourself a present. Now, if this were any other organization aside from Navigator, I could just stop there and call it a day. But no, even this has a ridiculous story behind it. Navigator was advertising the videos as Gaming in the Clinton Years in HD, and this isn't necessarily what we got. The first video was a little over 30 minutes, and the second was about an hour long. And they were, in fact, re-releases of the uncut videos I had compiled and posted on my 10 Hours of George Wood video over on the George Wood Archive. Link to that video in the description as well. Granted, I suppose the content is the same, but it isn't in the Gaming in the Clinton Years format that everyone was expecting. But there's even more to say here. The quality isn't technically HD, but it does look nicer than the originals, so I will give them that. But look what happens about 20 minutes into the first video. In Plot by Tradewest, Plot offers retractable limbs as a weapon in two choices for difficulty level. Yeah, this isn't a joke. The picture and audio noticeably degrades, and it stays that way until the very end of the video. So while described as an HD upscale, it turns out my 10 years of George Wood video is still, in the end, higher quality because that one doesn't degrade. To be fair, the second video doesn't have any degradation issues as far as I can tell, but still, it's embarrassing that I even have to point this out, and it's even more embarrassing that they would even post something that's in such a state. Those two were the only HD Gaming in the Clinton Years videos War of Awards ever posted. What they released only went up to about an hour and ten minutes of my 10 hours of George Wood video. Which means, if we're using that video as a benchmark, then there's still about nine and a half more hours, at least, waiting to be posted. But the channel has uploaded absolutely nothing after January 1st of this year. Furthermore, and this has to be said, why the hell did they post them on the War of Awards? These really, really should have been posted on Navigator, not just because it's been the home of gaming in the Clinton years since its inception, but for the views as well. The two videos in question have barely broken 100 views each. I have no doubt that if they were on Navigator's channel, the view count would be in the thousands at the very least. So we've gone through most of the major developments, and holy shit, I told you it was a lot to take in. But before we move on, I figured I'd say a few words on what all this means. The way I see it, just like a video on No Context Gaming in the Clinton Years is a hyper-concentrated shot of what makes Flights of Fantasy so weird, the events of the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020 is a hyper-concentrated shot of what makes Navigator as an organization so weird. Those events were planned, much like Gaming in the Clinton Years itself, to hype up their content, but all it ended up doing was confusing a ton of people. It didn't draw any attention to what they wanted, but instead focused people's anger and confusion on Navigator itself and the nonsensicality of their content. 
the fact that it continued Navigator's trend of purging all their content only added to that effect. Like everything else they've done, it ended up being a supremely interesting failure. So what's the status of the channels now? At some point, though I can't say exactly when, all of the Gaming in the Clinton Years videos reappeared on Navigator's channel. This suggests that they were never deleted, but probably just privatized and then unlisted. In any case, they're still there as of today, but sadly none of their other deleted and unlisted content has returned just yet. All the videos from the ARG have been unlisted as well, but can be accessed easily by going to Navigator's Owl Cave ARG playlist. As for the War of Awards, like I said, they haven't uploaded anything since January of 2020, and most of the ARG videos on that channel have likewise been unlisted, although you can still access them by going to the playlist appropriately titled Unlisted by Boomers. After the 1st of January, everything calmed down significantly, and before long it was back to normal, normal in this case being no content being uploaded at all. However, by the end of the month, something else materialized onto YouTube that took everybody by surprise.